Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the book of Zechariah. <coughs> we're in chapter 8 today, and we're going to be in chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. As we said, Zechariah is a contemporary of Haggai. He begins prophesying uh, the month that Haggai ceases prophesying. He's a priest, uh, but not the high priest. Um, and thus far, he has um, uh, brought uh, uh, about a call to repentance at the very beginning of the book, and then he shared with them eight visions he saw in one night, and these visions communicated to God's people his protection and provision, but to God's enemies their defeat. And then there was this um, transitional few verses in which uh, he continued introducing us to the concept of the Messiah and that the Messiah would encompass in one person both priest and king and associated that Messiah with the name Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus. Um, and uh, then he dealt with in chapter 7, this wonderful chapter, dealt with their questions about the fasting that they had um, gotten into the habit of performing when they were in Babylon and couldn't pursue um, tabernacle, temple worship. Uh, so um, before the last section, we have in chapter 8 um, a, um, uh, a series of 10 uh, short oracles of encouragement about how good it's going to be when the Messiah comes. And then in verses 18 through 23, we have this final promise, this final vision of the bliss of the Messianic age, which uh, um, is, uh, is connected uh, quite deeply to the books of Micah and Isaiah. Today, we want to look at verses 1 through 17. Uh, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about these, uh, these 10 short oracles of encouragement um, that he delivers. Uh, we'll have a few things to say. They, they sort of speak for themselves, and then again, um, we're sort of baffled as to what exactly is being described. But the, the message, like the message of Revelation, always comes through. We may not always know what something is, but we always know what it's about. Chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am exceedingly jealous for Zion. Yes, with great wrath I am jealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion, and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem will be called the city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women will again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each man with his staff in his hand because of age, and the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in the streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, it is too difficult if it is too difficult in the sight of the remnant of this people in those days, will it also be too difficult in my sight, declares the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am going to save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back, and they will live in the midst of Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Thus, says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. You who are listening in these days, to these words from the mouth of the prophets, those who spoke in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid to the end of the temple might be built. Um, for before those days there was no wage for a man or any wage for an animal, and for him who went out or came in there was no peace because of his enemies. And I said all man, men one against another. But now I will not treat the remnant of this people as in former days, declares the Lord of hosts. There will be peace for the seed. The vine will yield its fruit. The land will yield its produce. The heavens will give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to inherit all these things. And it will come about that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you that you may become a blessing. Do not be afraid, let your hands be strong. For thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I purposed to do harm to you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I have not relented, so I have again purposed in these days to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Don't be afraid. These are the things which you should do, 
speak the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment for peace in your gates, and let none of you devise evil in your hearts against another, and do not love perjury, for all these are what I hate, declares the Lord. I think it's clear exactly what he's talking about, but it's not clear exactly all the things that he says. One of the most important things, I think, for us to notice in this is that the remnant that he's talking about is a future remnant of the people who are listening to him on this day. He's talking to the remnant, those who return to Jerusalem, and he says, later, <laughs> later, I'm going to build a temple. They are building a temple, but he's talking about a different temple. He's talking about the, the Messianic kingdom, the Messianic age. And a remnant of these people will be part of that kingdom. And he describes the bliss of this place. The, the old folks are going to sit there, and they're not going to be regretful about what they remember from the past, the way you guys were when, some of you guys were when you laid the, the, uh, the, the foundation stones of the new temple. That's not going to happen this time. Kids are going to be able to play in the streets and feel safe. And, and in my kingdom, there's going to be plenty. And, and it's not going to be like in, in former times. Whenever uh, you violated uh, your covenant with me and I utterly destroyed you, uh, that's not going to be this way. From now on, whenever the Messianic kingdom, I'm going to do everything I can to, to ensure the success of the Messianic Kingdom, which means it will be a success. Um, and, and so this is what I want you to do. And this is what I want us to leave this section with. This is what I want you to do. I want you, if you're going to be completely obedient to me, I want you to speak the truth with each other and to judge with truth and judgment and peace in your gates. And don't devise evil in your heart against each other, and don't love perjury, because I hate all these things. Uh, this emphasizes truth-telling, this one does, uh, and also the intention of your heart, which Jesus is going to make a big, you know, he's going to make a centerpiece, really, of his teaching and his ministry, what's in your heart. It's what comes out of a man that defiles him, not what goes in. Um, and and I, he's again reiterating the values that he mentioned in the last chapter. Um, so um, it's such a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, uh, series of uh, images that communicate the blessings that we have in the Messianic Kingdom. Okay, before we go on to the prophecies about the coming Messiah and get into the um, the, the poetic section, um, uh, beginning in chapter nine. We're going to tomorrow talk about verses 18 through 23, which relies heavily on the prophets Micah and Isaiah to look at the Messianic age. And so we have some more bliss to deal with before we try to start having to figure out very difficult things. Okay, thank you for joining me. We'll pick up in chapter 8, verse 18 next time.